Good evening and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk. Tonight, we're very fortunate and privileged enough to be with us. Yung, you should be very proud of him, really. He's a, he grew up here in Dumaguete City and now he's a national figure doing a lot of impact work for not only for Luzon, but definitely for the entire country. And definitely, we need to support that. Kababayan, actually, if you may call you, uh, if we may call him that. Anyways, we have with us the OIC Assistant Secretary for Tourism and Development, and on concurrent capacity, talagang busy busy as Regional Director of the Department of Tourism, National Capital Region. We have with us Mr. Woodrow, better known as RR Makiling Jr. Sir RR, ASEC. Good afternoon, ASEC na ha. <laughs> <laughs> Doc Dino, thank you so much. It's yes. so good and nice to finally be with you on this show. Yes. Palang, the last time I was with you, tourism officer, back at that time. That's right. That's right. <laughs> we were top. Yes. We were, you know, yeah. this show started way, way back and then it evolved. <laughs> <laughs> and here again, we are. Here we are again. <laughs> Ayo ko rin pakita yun kasi medyo payak pa ako doon eh. <laughs> pare, no, pareho tayo. Doc, super ano pa, maliit pa tayo. Ngayon, sobrang healthy na. <laughs> Pero boy, is looking ka pa rin. So, really proud that uh, uh, and after this this interview and after our last interview, talaga you've gone places already. Now you're on the national scene already. Uh, very proud that uh, you're from Dumaguete, you're from here. And a lot of our... Uh, gentle people of Dumaguete is very proud of that. And they should know exactly what your plans are and what initiatives you'll be doing as uh, both no, as, uh, as ASEC for development of the Department of Tourism and as a regional director of the NCR. Um, I'm sure whatever developments you'll be doing there or initiatives will affect also the province and of the city of Dumaguete. Okay. Diba yung slogan mo, remember, no city left behind? Diba? No city is left behind yet. Diba? Diba? <laughs> <laughs> Naalala ko pa. Anyways. Now, uh, so ASEC, uh, RR, can you, can you tell us briefly uh, your career in government service and uh, how it all started for you in, in government uh, until maybe give our viewers also for those who are, you know, the younger generations na hindi pa natin nabutan na uh, would like to know you better. So maybe you can give them a brief idea about yourself. Oh, thanks, sir, Dino. Thanks so much, Doc, for allowing me to join you. Yes. And, you know, exactly today, parang around 10 years ago, I started working in government. It started in 2011 as mm. job order. <laughs> job order. Po. Yes, sir. Uh, doc, I, job order ako sa province of Negros Oriental as tourism ah. officer one uh, <laughs> under Miss Myla Abeliana. So, lahat ng mga job orders dyan. Yes. You just aim, you just focus, discipline lang, and determination, right. it will take you places. So, uh, in 2012, I joined the city government of Dumaguete mm-hmm. as the city tourism officer because there was a vacancy at the time. See, uh, okay. former tourism officer, si, uh, I forgot the name. Mm-hmm. So, na siya in 2012. Mm-hmm. So, my, so, that's my first year talaga that I'm part of, you know, yung my GSIS na. Yung yes. may benefits na. Kasi yun job order, di ba? <laughs> Dubahan talaga so, sa rigors, ha? <laughs> yes, I, I, from the ranks. Kaya nga, tingnan ko yung PDS ko, sir. Parang over the past 10 years, parang natutuwa ako. Like, yeah. nakita ko na po. Ah, sakto man, sakto. Ang kadang pacing ba? Over yeah. the past 10 years. So, yes. Yeah, so, after that, I was with uh, the city government of Dumaguete. Mm-hmm. And in 2013, to 2016, I was likewise the protocol officer of May- of then Mayor Chiquiting Sagar Badia. Yes. Because we were heavily involved with the sister cities abroad That's in right. Alameda. So Alameda, I was like the yes. protocol officer also. Yes. So in 2016, I I resigned from government service in Dumaguete. Mm-hmm. But shortly after a few months, I joined the office of the president mm-hmm. in Malacanang as okay. a presidential staff officer five. Okay. So I started as a staff at mm-hmm. the palace. I worked mm-hmm. at the office of the appointment secretary. Uh, the appointment secretary is my, you know, my colleague also in the Association of Tourism Officers of the Philippines. Uh, she was, she used to be the tourism officer of Davao City, the si Asa mm-hmm. Set Marquez. Okay. And because when I was the city tourism officer, Doc Dino, if you remember, if you recall. I was likewise the president of the Sidlakang Association That's right. of Tourism That's right. Officers. I remember that. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> tama, tama, tama. So Ms. Jackie right now is now the president also. Yes. And then so 
At the same time, concurrently, I was also the president of the Central Visayas Tourism Officers Association. That was the first time na Taga Negros ang presidente sa Civitoa. And concurrently also, I was um, elected as the national auditor of the Association of Tourism Officers of the wow. Philippines. So okay. that's where I was able to network and made a lot of friends mm-hmm. for Dumaguete, for work, for personal and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And so when the time I needed a help uh, to, you know, I wanted to return back to um, government. No? Yeah. So I joined the palace with Asak Lisette Marquez. But four months lang yun, sir. Four uh-huh. months, I was, after four months, they needed a person to be assigned in Davao City. Mm-hmm. So I was assigned in Davao in February. Yeah. Um, to handle the events of the president there Correct. but i was already promoted as director to okay. of the office of the president so that's where i started my officership already part right then, from your being job order huh? yes uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's I'm, so, i'm always proud to be where i yes. started <laughs> yes yeah, so uh, you're so, a good uh, example really of uh, going through the no, <laughs> ladder oh, yes oh. yes And so then please continue. I, I was I was my tour of duty in Davao was only around four months later. Mm-hmm. And then I was recalled already back to Manila. Mm-hmm. And at the time um I was already with when I returned, I was already uh the aide of uh then secretary uh, Bongo, the special assistant to the president. Wow. So it was it was a time that we were already uh doing a lot of work both for the palace and the president and him as well. Correct. And in 2019, nung nanalo na si Senator Bongo, I told him na, Sir, um, di man ko abogado po, wat man tatakaw man o wat tatakaw man o College of Law ba? So, I told him na, so, asa, nangutana siya na ako, asa man ka, where do you want? Sabi yeah. ko, Sir, I think, well, my, you know, my heart is really for tourism. So, uh, he helped me, he talked to the president and of course, he talked to uh, Secretary Bernal Ramalupuy at the time. And in uh, July 8 of 2019, I was appointed a regional director of the National Capital Region of wow. the Department of Tourism. Wow. So, until October 15, I was designated as the OIC Assistant Secretary for another sector because mm-hmm. our sector is tourism regulation and regional operations. Yes. There's a different sector which is in which involves uh, product and market development and tourism development planning and the uh, foreign offices, our tourism attaches across the world. Yeah. So that that sector is called tourism development sector. So I am the concurrent uh, OIC assistant secretary for that particular sector as well. So yeah, wow. that's why, and that's the reason why I'm here to yeah. uh, with Doc Dino. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's talk about, before we go back in time by... Uh, you know, yes. briefly telling our viewers about your work with uh, LGU Dumaguete. Let's talk about your present work as ASEC no? uh, for okay. development. Uh, briefly tell our viewers what exactly is expected from an ASEC for development. Well, it's very simple. We have so much um, beautiful natural spots across the country. Mm-hmm. So our main task is for, you know, domestic tourism reboot. Because, okay. you know, foreign travel right now And foreign tourists, you know, they couldn't enter the country right now mm-hmm. because of our borders, no. But our tra- domestic travelers, meaning kita, kitang tanan, we can already travel across the country. But um, before we do that, we have to do a lot of uh, product and market uh, development circuits. We have to mm-hmm. develop new circuits and new products. Okay. So basically, we're in. Uh, I'll be in charge of developing. Uh, We have already, we started this already, Doc. We have already 44 circuits <laughs> developed over the past few months while we yeah. are on pandemic. Yes. We were uh-huh. also doing a lot of research and, you know, studies and stuff like that mm. together with all the regional uh, offices across the country. Mm. And we were able to map out at least 44 circuits already fully developed that we are ready for our domestic uh, tourism. And right now, we are also developing 71 new circuits. So basically, the 44 and the 71, I'll be focused on that particular as Assistant Secretary for Tourism Development. And, and this involves yeah. across the country, which involves certainly includes Dumaguete and Negros Oriental. That's good to hear. And you call that simple, ah? But parang masyado technical. <laughs> Hearing from you directly, it's really simple at your terms. But uh, that's a big job, really. And uh, really nice to hear that... Uh, 
Negros Oriental and Dumaguete City will be part of that really no mm-hmm. always uh, always top of the mind ang Negros Oriental uh, in fact I'll show, I'll, I'll show you a book later that we have the bucket list and dun talaga please Negros do. please do please later, do later <laughs> <laughs> that's very good to hear now let's uh, let's take our viewers back in time when you were here uh, working as um, in LGU Dumaguete as the tourism head here uh, what specific uh, legacy so to speak did you leave behind uh, the city tourism office and the initiatives that you did please please let them know uh, well doc dino parang hindi naman siguro legacy <laughs> <laughs> i was just a you know a small entity at that time there also so but i was just part of the whole administration of then uh, mayor chiquiting sagarbaria yeah. and at the time you know in every time of the year you know there are seasons eh? that yes. particular season that was like strong for festivals if you notice correct talagang malakas ang festivals malakas ang events and not just in Dumaguete yeah. it's across the country because seasonal kasi yung mood ng Pilipinas eh. there will be seasons of festivals seasons of all other arts etc so at that point in time I was just lucky that that was the season for big festivals that, that's right you know, remember when I joined uh, in, 20, in 2012 that was January 2 2012 mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like talagang diretso salang na because we were competing for the Sinulog Festival. Our <laughs> Sinulog Festival. The Tisimo Final Grammy, ha? <laughs> certainly. Certainly. Parang, ha? Kasi in three weeks time, competition na. So, they were yeah. already starting to um, practice as early as after the fiesta, which uh-huh. was December, November, uh-huh. December. Mm-hmm. So, January, compete na sa Cebu. So, sabi ko, oh my God. So, <laughs> well, Ganun naman talagang buhay. So we were there, we competed, and I mm. think we were able to, for the first time, no, and I think the Sandurut Festival landed in in the open uh, category, open interpretation, something mm-hmm. like seventh mm-hmm. or eighth of the okay. so many competing okay. teams across the country. So, yes. well, yun, that was in 2012. And <sighs> in 2013, talagang, we were also uh, focused on a lot of I was working closely with the stakeholders at that time. Remember, I was young. Yes, I yes, just, yes. I was few with the government. Yes. I was working closely with La Desa Quesada Farm. That's right. With La Glinda Disquata. And so we were really uh, reinventing the cultural concept of Dumaguete and working closely with the out-of-school youth. If you remember this group, na, we were uh, there's this... Um, Ta- yata, the yata, yata, yeah, uh, oh, yeah, oh. The yata. I think they're still, uh, they're still. Until now, they're uh, very active, still working. I was the just talking office, to yeah. Miss Desa, yes, oh, yeah. So, kumbaga, that was the season of, you know, reinventing and you know, making sure that our cultural identity is very much alive in the city of Dumaguete because we are highly known as, you know, the city of, uh, you know, intellectual city because of yes. Silliman yes. and yes. other schools, Foundation University and St. Right. Paul University, all first. You know, yeah. leading, leading, leading institutions. So yes. all of this, talagang we were trying to boost. We, I work closely also with the uh, uh, Silliman University Cultural Affairs Committee, being part of the committee as tourism officer. So that was the season, talaga, for making sure that uh, cultural work is not limited in the campus. Yes, but certainly it's uh, extended to the streets and especially to the out-of-school youth. No, so. Yes. That's one thing I can remember. And the other thing, if I recall correctly, we were um, in 2014 or 2015. Because of our heavy network with the Department of Tourism, working closely with then Regional Director, uh, the Wena Lu Y. Montesilio. Mm-hmm. She's now here with me in the central office. She's now the <laughs> Director in the Office of Industry and Power Development. Talagang katu- parang ka-level mo, sir. Parang ganyan. Human resource din. Ganyan. So... Uh, I worked closely with our regional director at the time and we marketed so like heavily Dumaguete especially mm-hmm. and uh, Negros Oriental mm-hmm. and in the Forbes uh, list we were already one of the top three wow. top five uh-huh. uh, uh, retirement destination in the world if you recall in 2014 2015 Doc that's Dino, right that's why right. so I heard that Yeah, that's where we noticed the influx of so much Chinese Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, yes. because there's a lot yes. of that and there's also of course there's a because at the time also we were number two in the Chinese serve in the Chinese um survey for top independent travel destinations meaning you don't need 
a travel agency or an agent to go to this particular place. So, nanguna ang dumagat. Because, you know, it's very small. Eh. That's Dumagat right. Is very, it's rather small. Mm-hmm. Everything there in one city center. Mm-hmm. And if you want to go to all these destinations, if you want to go to Apo Island, mm-hmm. you want to go to a boating in uh, Baiz and Manhuyud for the whale sharks and the yeah. dolphins. So, yeah. you just converge the public market area and then you want to <laughs> taste the food and then lahat sa public market. And if you want to have an international flavor just across the boulevard, Mm-hmm. And all super muda pa. Diba? Yes, so, yes. Parang, that's the reason why we top that particular market, source market as well. So, you don't need, parang it's DIY, do it ah. your own, everything. <laughs> so, that's that's the beauty of Dumaguete and Negros Pantal. So, these are, you know, some of the th- uh, few things that we have somehow contributed while we were working at the city government, working closely with the stakeholders. We always... I uh, think that this is not just a one-person job, but always Precisely. a community approach. That's right. That's right. Now, how did this, uh, Isaac, how did this initial immersion and exposure in LGU Dumbaguete uh, with local government tourism uh, help you in your regional, now your regional and uh, national position? You know, Doc, no? when I was appointed as regional director, I always think first of the, because all information, is bottoms up. Correct. The data that we have at the region of regional office. Yeah. You know, it emanates from that city tourism office there in Dumaguete, yung maliit dyan sa, you know, lahat ng umaakyat papuntang Region 7, uh-huh. papuntang Manila, galing yan sa tourism office dyan sa uh, Quezon Park natin. That's right. <laughs> so, I, yeah. you know, at the time when I was tourism officer, we passed the local legislation on mandatory accreditation of tourism enterprises and the submission of data because yes. very important and data we you know we acknowledge uh, then mayor na and see director wang that time we acknowledge the laga that data is very crucial in creating and crafting policies at that point in time That's so yeah. lahat ng data don ako talaga yung well together with my team sa dumagate mm. mm. so all this we get our data in dumagate and since we are so good at gathering data at nahilig talaga tayo dyan, we top, Dumaguete continues to be top one destination uh-huh. in Region 7. That's Pinatalo right. Pinatalo si Bohol. Kahit yeah. siguro, mas madami pa sa Panglao. But because, hindi sila compliant. Correct. So, wala sila. You know, you're as good as the data you bring into the country. That's right. Something That's like right. that. That's so, right. palaging number one si Dumaguete. Uh-huh. And of course, Negros Oriental kasi ang bulk is really in the data gathering Dumaguete. So, That's right. in fact, Pinadala tayo ni Regional Director Wang Montesilio sa Bohol, sa Cebu, to give our best practices because we were one of the very first few LGUs who uh, placed teeth to that RA9590, otherwise known as the Tourism Act of 2019. Because mm. it's, it states there that you, are to, uh, you have to submit and you have to uh, do this accreditation, but mm. you need a local ordinance to actually implement the same, to make, to make it like more, uh, you know, Talagang they really have to follow. And true to that, we are all compliant. Up to now, Dumagata is very much compliant. And we have, I think that's one of the institutional reforms that we have uh-huh. uh, effected during our time. So, lahat ng gagawin sa isang region or kailangan ng isang region, they always rely heavily on the local government. Teams. So, when I was appointed here at NCR, I have 17 Mm-hmm. I have 17 local government units in NCR. Mm-hmm. But grabe dito, Doc, kasi lahat 16 are big cities. Correct, so I, correct. Only have, <laughs> I only have one tiny municipality, which is Pateros. Correct. Uh-huh. But all the rest, 16 yan. And these are all the first, the capital city of the Philippines, is Manila, LGU, you have Makati, you have Taguig, Cusco, uh-huh. etc. And all these big, big cities that they don't actually rely on national government agencies such as, for instance, Negros, Dumaguete, that we, you yeah. know, we really rely on national NGAs, no? But dito sa Metro Manila, medyo walang pakialam yan. Kasi, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, we, but I, the fact that remains that I'm fully aware on, you know, how to really make sure that they are enjoined to help us in the, you know, in tourism, in the national tourism building, and of course, all of this. So, I work closely with the tourism directors because iba dito sir, like mga tourism officers ng mga cities, they're also directors. Correct. Para silang, para silang oh. assistant regional director level. Correct, na, correct. Na, kasi oh. malalaki eh. Oh. So I work closely with the tourism directors in the different cities. 
And because I come from a city, in fact, a uh, small but vibrant and, you know, model <laughs> city across the country. So <laughs> yeah. I'm always proud. I always say, na, yes. you know, I'm from Dumaguete. Mm-hmm. I know how it is to be in the LGU and I know yes. how it is to feel vis-a-vis a national government agency. Yeah. So I'll make sure I'll bridge that gap. Hence, our tagline that there's no, that no city is left behind yes. in Metro Manila. So yes. lahat, lahat, tulong, tulong. Uh, in 2019, I was appointed pre-pandemic. So there are very few months lang bago nag-pandemic, just ko lang. <laughs> so... <laughs> So when I when I um, joined the department, together with my team here in the National Capital Region, we thought, what should we focus in selling right now, no? Yes. To make sure that all are included. Yes. So we came out with the Metro Yummy Picks. So what's that? What's that again? What's that again? Metro. Here. Wow, Yummy Picks. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. Good title. Be part of the flavors. Okay, yes. very good. I got that tagline, so, huh? <laughs> If there's If there's one thing, kahit nag-aaway-aaway kayo, but if iparada na ang lechon dyan sa harap, Doc Dino, Wala. yung kinilaw natin, pati yung chichero namin, I'm uh, sure, goodbye ang kaaway. Okay <laughs> diba? If their food is a one resource, yes. it actually brings us all together, actually. It brings That's us right. all together in That's fellowship. Right. At nakakalimutan ang mga unnecessary things in our lives. That's right. And we just have to enjoy. So we came out with a Metro Yummy Picks. Very so good. this is a compilation of all the iconic dishes. So not just any dish, yeah. but iconic. Like for instance, if you are like from Pateros, of course, uh-huh. yung balot. Uh-huh. Yung balot natin. So everything is here. Uh-huh. Like from what? From Mankati to Quezon City. Uh-huh. So that's the that's a table. So this is the food. So what yeah. we did is we validated we validated in each city all mm-hmm. the iconic dishes so it's like bottoms up, up pa rin sila ang right. nominate yeah. the LGU pa rin ang nominate na itong gusto namin i-feature yes okay yes. so yun so lahat talaga that's why we are so proud and we were able to launch this in December of 2018 just before the pandemic so buti na lang nakalaunch kami nito <laughs> and together with this like all of this like lahat talaga we also made videos uh-huh. of all the LGUs in NCR talagang no city is left behind so that's right talaga oh. pag upo natin in July immediately we launched this in um, December so in a span no. of five months we're able to pull everybody together focus tayo let's focus on food let's fo- because you know when people go to a particular tourist destination you know aside from the ta- from the destination the site kakain yeah. talaga yan eh Precisely. So we have to Precisely. And tourism mm-hmm. is everybody's business. Dapat lahat Correct. may income jan. Correct. So dapat lahat ng you know the tourism value chain natin jan. Yeah. Lahat may income. So, eto nakikita natin at that point in time, our food kasi wala pang ganitong compilation. So uh-huh. in fact, after we launched this, all other regions were uh, you know in, enjoying to really come up with their own regional book of food. So. Maybe something we can do something like that, Doc Dino, nasa Dumaguete, like lahat Precisely. Of flavors, Precisely. local and yung yeah. mga international flavors na which will anjan talaga sa Dumaguete kasi ang daming foreigners natin, di ba? So maybe right. something uh, Mayor Ipe would like uh, would love to do in his last term, no, as Mayor of Dumaguete, uh, right. said, to come up coffee table book. Hey, hey Isaac, you know, uh, Dumaguete has no real real na tourist site, di ba? If you, if you, parang yes. gateway na siya eh. Would you agree, yes. Isaac? No? You've been here. You know, for a fact, it's a gateway. And food is really one of the things yes. that's really exciting in Dumaguete as far as tourism is concerned. Uh, yes. Your comments on that? It's, you are so right. It's really the food. Because <laughs> lahat ng friends ko dito sa Manila, sinasabi yeah. nila like, Patagasan ka. I'm from Dumaguete. Really? You're from Dumaguete? Oh my God, I love your food. It's very Correct. cheap. Correct. <laughs> diba, diba, dog? Diba, yes. Like, you can have your steak there at Don Atelano. Yes. Uh, ganyan yung presyo. Pag- That's ito, right. Ito, medyo mahal eh. So, pag- <laughs> so, all these international f- flavors, nasa yes. boulevard lang yan lahat. Uh-huh. Whether Japanese, there's a small one there. That's right. Japanese dyan na masarap. Oh, That's right. Pa- <laughs> And then there's like, every there's goulash at next uh, Uh, next door so mm. i think food talaga everybody converge while we are a gateway but mm. we are a destination in south dog dino i so believe that because mm. i think 
yung pagpunta ng Dumaguete, there's a certain vibe in Dumaguete. I'd yes. like to tell you this. this yeah, sure, I, sure. I, would, I would often tell this to my, you know, when I was tourism officer, uh-huh. I would normally, uh, when I entertain guests, I would normally tell them that, you know, I have to really caution all of you and warn you. Because Dumaguete comes from the uh, native word dagit. Dagit. Yeah. Or to charm. Okay. And Dumaguete is now the uh, one of the top retirement destinations in yeah. the world because so many have been charmed and lived here. So <laughs> I warn you that when you ever, wherever you go in Dumaguete or outside, be very cautious and careful because you might be charmed. Yes. You might not leave. Yes. You might just settle because Dumaguete is the place to be. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, coming from the ASEC himself, like, grab it. So, I'm sure you can feel that, Doc, now, with your That's friends right. coming yeah. over. They always yes. say, na, you know, Dumaguete is a different vibe, talaga. That, That's right. That campus by the sea yeah. vibe, that boulevard scene, that small town, take the pedicab, and everything is just so warm That's and right. hospitable. Yes. I think that's our, that's our strength. Eh. Yes. We live by our dagit. And we can speak English very yes. good yes. as compared to other provinces and cities mm-hmm. across the country. Yes. So we can really communicate. Communication mm-hmm. is very important in tourism because yes. it's where the flow of information. You know, tourism is all about stories. That's right. Story. <laughs> well said, Isaac. Now, let's talk about concurrently your the regional director for National Capital Region. Let's talk about that. Uh, I know for a fact that uh, really uh, you're just simplifying things for us, but definitely it's a very stressful work. You're talking about how many cities there that you work with, with tourism officers, 16, and then just one municipality, Pateros. But it's not, I'm pretty sure it's really stressful work. But how, how, how did you go about relating to them and making mm-hmm. sure that things are linked? laid down and things work out and things move as far as tourism is concerned? Well, again, I'd like to say it. For me, it's quite simple, Doc, because I, I come from an LGU. Yes. I know what an LGU wants to hear. Correct. Coming from... Diba ikaw, Doc, pag may pumumuta dyan sa Dumaguete, mga national officials, you as an LGU, you are expecting to hear something. Correct. And for the longest time, almost six years or six years or so, uh-huh. LGU ako eh. Local yes. talaga ako. Community work ako. So whenever may pumupunta sa Dumaguete before, grabe talaga yung training ko sa Dumaguete. Whenever they come there, I expect something na ito yung sasabihin ng isang NGA sa akin. Right. And I'll make sure, mm-hmm. nung naging NGA na ako, National mm-hmm. Government Agency, I always try to make sure mm-hmm. ng sinasabi ko yung mga gustong marinig ng isang LGU. That's yes. a very peculiar yan. Talagang uh-huh. nation, you know, Alam mo sa the local government code of 1991, talagang empowered our local government unit to have all of this regulation, you know, mm-hmm. branding and direction, the sense of direction. Yes. Sila ng, there's that law that, you know, gives the LGU to chart its own destiny. Eh. Yes. At minsan, pag ang national official pumunta doon, ay hindi, ito yung gusto mong gawin, itong gagawin nyo, ganyan. Doc Dino, believe me, anong sas- no, of course, hindi pwede sa amin yan, di ba? <laughs> yeah. Kasi iba, iba na yung mentality ng LGU ngayon eh. That's right. We will chart our own destiny because we know better because uh-huh. we are on the ground. Uh-huh. Well, we need your guidance and your wisdom yeah. that we will chart our own. So parang something like that. There's mm. wide latitude of discretion on the part of our city directors here. And we listen. We listen yes. uh-huh. and we collaborate. It's uh-huh. always a you know collaborative effort. That's why it's a bit easier to work with all of these friends of ours in the city. Yung nga sabi nila eh, uh, it really takes one to know one. Yeah. <laughs> coming from a from, coming from an LGU and now yes. being an ASEC, so you know basically the sentiments of the uh, tourism directors there. Uh, anyways, now that you're concurrently the regional director for National Capital Region and at the same time the OIC assistant uh, uh, for uh, development of uh, the Department of Tourism, how do you manage your time? I mean, I'm pretty sure. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> natutulog ka pa ba? <laughs> yes, Doc. I try to sleep six hours. Or wow. Seven okay. Hours okay. <laughs> so, how, do you, how do you manage everything there? Well, first, no, I. No, I'm not promoting Apple, no, but 
I have this. It's <laughs> yung dami yung for health talaga siya eh. Like pagdating uh-huh. ng 10:30, yes. Hindi na ako tumatanggap ng calls. Parang dinadivert yeah. niya. So, That's it right. Me. Parehas tayo. <laughs> Di ba ikaw like so oh, yung mga viber minsan hindi niya yan ina-accept parang something parang yes. you know my screening na. So yes. at yes. night time I try to sleep, I try to you know get yes. some rest. Yeah. But basically, it's really just about coordination. Well, ako minsan nalilate talaga. In fact, kanina, di ba? I was like, I was telling you na, can you push our pushback tayo? Kasi I, I wasn't finished yet. Precisely. So, with the uh, previous schedule. But yes. yeah, yun lang. <laughs> But you know one thing? Yeah. One thing for sure, if you love what you're doing, it will be a lot easier, especially Precisely. in time. Precisely. Oh, Kasi, oh. like, look, look, Doc Dino. He's managing the city, handing two offices, and he has a show. <laughs> <laughs> And he has a TV show. Pa, can you By the way, this interview is about you, huh? <laughs> Anyways, thank you for saying that. Uh, yeah. Baka ba promoted ako agad dito, ha? <laughs> oh, dapat, dapat, dapat. Mayor? <laughs> Anyways, uh, we all know that the COVID-19 pandemic and during its inception and now has really affected the tourism industry. No, uh, I was just asking this during my last interview, the one you saw with another uh, inquirer, uh, Philippine Daily Inquirer uh, columnist who writes about tourism. No? But uh, as the ASEC right now and as the uh, concurrent uh, regional director for National Capital Region, of course, there has been plans in place that you're doing and implementing to at least mitigate the effects of the pandemic. Uh, could you tell our viewers what initiatives have you done together with Secretary Puyat and the rest of the officials of the Department of Tourism? Of course, with the approval and concurrence of the President of the uh, President Duterte, of of of, of uh, how you are able to mitigate and at least uh, sustain the tourism development in the country. Well, Doc, ganito. So basically, of the 27 months I'm with DOT, 19 months. Ana, puro na pandemic response. <laughs> Kasi March 14 naghit na eh. So yeah. if you if you recall that time, there were a lot of stranded and distressed foreign tourists in Dumaguete in Negros Oriental. Yeah, I think it was uh, the tourism office was also helping yes. in facilitating uh, the uh, the repatriation of these foreign individuals mm-hmm. coming from the regions. In the case of this Dumaguete pabalik to Manila or Cebu and you know take their repatriation mm-hmm. flights across the country. So first, we were able to launch a lot, a number of at least 20 repatriation flights all okay. over the Philippines, yes. uh, coming from Shargao, Camigin, mm-hmm. Boracay, of course Cebu, Dumaguete, to ensure that all our foreign tourists are taken care of. Remember, it's just like customer service. Mm-hmm. It depends on Filipinas. Right. So by crisis, we make sure that they are safe homeward bound. So, yes. si Sak talaga pinangunahan yan. Talagang she was really on top of the situation ensuring that we have to spend, we have to spend for repatriation flights. Like one, yes. one, one particular flight will cost us a million. So, it yes. does not matter for as long as we're able to make a lot of goodwill also mm, for our, right. you know, that's the right. different countries and the ambassadors who are, you know, calling us. That's right. After that, we already focus our efforts on repatriating the stranded, uh, local tourists, no? Kani mga mm. Filipino na stranded all over. So, no. we were able to do that also. And after it, you know, the dust was settled already. So, we focus on our regulations because all our hotels, all our travel agencies, all were closed. Walang, di ba? Walang, di ba? There was a shutdown talaga. Correct. So, well, except for Metro Manila, we had to open up a few hotels mm. parang Uh, we can use it for quarantine for our uh, returning overseas Filipinos and like, OFWs. Yes. So, you know, can you just imagine the influx of people from the provinces across the country and mm. NCR is the basin. Mm. So, kumbaga, ang NAIA terminal, because uh, NAIA, we also have a satellite office in NAIA that's under the NCR regional office. That's right. So, that's the basin here uh, coming from the different regions. And at the same time, though, Yes. OF, OFWs from across the world, especially coming from the Middle East, dumalating din also sa NAIA because walang trabaho dan. Lockdowns all over. Precisely. So, yes. It was so miserable. I thought I'd never come out of it. But you know, here we are. We're talking right now. Thank you, Lord, for enduring us. 
<laughs> so anyways, so for our stakeholders, the secretary gave a uh, directive to waive all the accreditation fees in 2020, 2021, until today, no? So mm-hmm. all the accreditation fees, remember, under Republic Act RA9593, if you are not a DOT accredited and if you are a primary tourism enterprise, mm-hmm. hence you cannot be given a mayor's permit. So very critical in their operation. So we acknowledge that there are a lot of losses, heavy losses. Yes. So we waive all the fees. So tour guides, yeah. lahat ng, uh, primary and secondary tourism enterprises and actors, lahat waive. Secondly, we were able to come up with a lot of um, uh, department orders and um, uh, you know all these guidelines mm-hmm. on the health and safety protocols in the conduct of tourism business. Yes. We were there every step of the way as we somehow slowly opened the economy and certain areas uh, when the restaurants are opening, when the hotels are opening, we were always there to provide guidance. Correct. Third, mm-hmm. while we are on lockdown, we are at the comforts of our own homes, DOT pioneered the digital learning. So all our industry manpower development training programs were delivered like this, mm-hmm. <laughs> virtually. So um, we've, de- we've touched a number of stakeholders across the country and it's a bit mm. easier especially if my internet but if walang internet that's that remains to be a problem and that's the right. part of ncr the part of the regional office in ncr we launched the trailblazing uh, leadership excellence series mm-hmm. in 2020 where mm-hmm. our speakers were focused not on training on industry and power development but yeah. more so on life because a lot were depressed okay. a lot were like wanted to give up a lot mm. were like nowhere to go so we got the top-notch um uh, motivational speakers in the country like francis mm-hmm. kong mm-hmm. josiah go and the likes mm-hmm. and it was so so successful that mm-hmm. uh we, we got raving reviews from the pcci here in manila and everybody because all were like it's a different type of training we delivered mm-hmm. it's it's about your core right. about your spirit to move mm-hmm. on and drive and mm-hmm. fight back and you know mm-hmm. survive this pandemic yes. so our theme it's really about survive and serve you know we have right. to live this day so we can serve tomorrow it's always like that because people you see the bad time you are not there's like number number 15 died number 21 passed away all right. these figures and there's a lot of here in manila and there's yeah. it's just crazy being the epicenter of the pandemic in the country yes because we have a lot of returning overseas filipinos so champer with all of those uh, exposures and the viruses mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. dito talaga ang grabe ang massive concentration so we were doing all of that mm-hmm. and now this year as we are finally uh, slowly but surely reopening the economy especially yes. our tourism sites yes uh, the secretary was v- making sure that our tourism workers are protected a healthy tourism mm-hmm. worker mm-hmm. by 100 percent vaccination inoculation of all of this mm-hmm. will ensure that they can go to work right. and when they can work they have salary and when they have salary they can feed their families so in metro manila uh doc dino yes we are 99.4 percent complete wow. already with our vaccination of wow that's workers. good to hear we, yeah. we were the first of all over the regions was able to achieve such because we focused talaga here because our workers doc were also workers in the quarantine hotels Correct. isolation yes. hotels yes. very exposed they were yes. our drivers mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. we si secretary pinangunahan talaga yung gi yung gi gidutan maayo kung bakit mm-hmm. masaya pa so to ensure na 100% in fact that's the reason why um si secretary also uh, gave uh, through her initiative and you know negotiations with the vaccines are we are very thankful with secretary charlie galvez and yeah. uh, secretary vince dison mm-hmm. our uh, deputy chief implementer mm-hmm. and we've given dumagete 50000 doses of pfizer vaccines para ginas mga tourism and cultural That's workers right. that oh, oh, should oh, oh, oh. so mayor was telling me that thank you very much oh, oh, oh. Okay, yeah. vaccines vaccines work Doc. So we had to really campaign really hard that mm-hmm. all these tourism workers will be vaccinated. Para ang mga turista, when they go there, they have that certain degree of confidence 
na dili sila matakdan sa sakit because sila vaccinated na sila na nasa like RT-PCR pa so ensuring na yung mga person serving them are also inoculated and you know 100 that's really the goal eh. by year end we should hit 100% right now we are uh, around uh, 60 uh, 7% all over the country uh, mm-hmm. fully vaccinated so oh, your yeah. work that's our effort between now until the year end or kung sa dumagate pa siguro before fiesta dapat 100% <laughs> <laughs> i hope so yeah that's what we're targeting on uh, i was struck by your statement about you know if there was only an instruction manual how to go about this pandemic no uh, i really yung tana uh, mayor was talking about it if he only knew na mag ganito yung mangyari maybe he could have had second thoughts of running again no <laughs> but, but you know surviving the pandemic surviving this covid really hats off to all LGUs, hats off to yes. our public officials no? uh, because there's no existing that's what we were telling the public there's no existing manual on how to go about step one, step two, wala. It was all parang, parang by hindsight na lang, uh, as it comes, yeah. no? And uh, yes. uh, really appreciative sa national government for really coming up with certain solutions how to mitigate uh, COVID and how to run this economy uh, and make it sustain- sustainable again, no? But let's talk about the DOT uh, Doc, PSEC, no? You, Doc, yes, can, yes. I, can I just add two points before we... Please, please do, on. please do, PSEC. In... Um, in conjunction with my previous, uh, you know, mga ginagawa ng DOT, yes. we also allocated 9 billion pesos. Ito yung financial side. Okay. We okay. allocated... F- that was my billion. next question actually. So please, please okay. elaborate on that. Oh, yan. Madabi gusto allo- marinig yan. Oh. Yeah, we allocated 9 billion pesos to Bayanihan 2. Okay. Um, 3 billion of that is for the Ayuda or yung Tourism Ayuda which is 5,000 pesos each for each okay. tourism worker. Okay. So, uh, in Dumaguete and Negros Renta, the Gansad yung naka, ubay-ubay ang nakadawat ng 5,000 each. No? Mm. So, there's that 3 billion. Uh, our utilization rate when ut- when Bayanihan to expired is around 90%. So, we've given the money as much as possible. And there's 6 billion on loans. So, okay. we launched the 6 billion pesos, we place it in the SB Corp or the Small Business Corporation which is under the DTI. So, kanang SB Corp, it's really for everybody. If mm-hmm. kayo, you haven't, the good thing about the 6 billion fund is no expiration. No expiration yes. uh. of money. So, in other words, the money is still there. We still have a lot of billions of SB Corp for tourism uh, enterprises. So, if you're a small, medium SME tourism enterprise, so please avail. There's so much money there's one year moratorium, zero mm-hmm. interest. Mm-hmm. I mean, and then you just choose how many uh, years to pay. So, kumbaga, if you if you take a loan now, one year, wala bayad, zero interest. So probably, and I'm sure by 2022 around uh, March, I think we are able to you know reboot already our domestic travel. So by yeah. then you're able to settle your payables. But if you need your cash now because you need to you know. For your, for your empleyado, for whatever mm-hmm. you need to renovate stuff like that, or mm-hmm. just say capitalization, then please avail. That's your money. Quarta na ninyo, inyo nang dapat pahimuslan ang ato ang six billion na as SB Corp. You can just check online, Small Business Corporation or sbcorp.com, and just apply and avail of our six billion loans to all of you. Para gina ninyo gipanghimuslan gina ni Secretary Berna sa Congress hearings for Bayanihan 2 mm. para gyud nate mahatag sa atong ayuda para sa mga katawhan sa turismo. That's real good news, Isaac, no? Now, uh, having said what what uh, you you and the rest of the DOT has experienced in terms of this pandemic, are you Isaac, are you optimistic of the very fact that of course we have to live through this pandemic without and we're not even sure when this will end? Uh, what's going to happen next? Are you optimistic about the survival and uh, the, rev- the revival of tourism industry in the future? Well, certainly, though. Mm. For us, Keta Pang Pinoy, we are the most resilient individuals <laughs> probably <laughs> in the whole world. <laughs> correct, correct. I'd like, to give, I'd like to give some figures. You know, okay. in um, pre-pandemic, mm. pre-pandemic um, we've received a total of 8.2 million foreign arrivals in 2019. So that's very high. Okay. Uh, record record breaking than yun. But more importantly, we were able to record 110 million domestic trips. In other words, okay. these are Filipinos like si Doc Dino, 
mo travel o Boracay, mo travel mm-hmm. o Cebu, vacation okay. sa El Nido. Mm-hmm. They've recorded 110 million domestic travels by Filipinos themselves. In other words, what does this mm-hmm. give explain to us? Mm-hmm. That domestic travel is really the backbone of our tourism industry. Okay. Yeah. In other words, each tourist spends an average of 2,500 to 6,000 pesos mm-hmm. a day. Depending kung asa siya mo stay o hotel. Five star, mm-hmm. one star, or mm-hmm. uh, hostel, something like that. Mm-hmm. And therefore, uh, the only way to really help our economy right now is, you know, ang Pinoy, lockdown for the longest time, ganahan yun ang magawas, there's the revenge travel. Mm-hmm. Based on our focus group discussions and studies, the ask kayo ang revenge travel. Ka. We just like to appeal to all Filipinos, mm-hmm. especially ako mga pangsuun ng dia. If you plan to travel, just plan to travel here in the Philippines. Spend yes. your money here in the Philippines. If yes. we can only achieve or hit the 50% of the 110 million in 2019, then that is very good figures that will feed the economy, that will okay. feed salaries for our tourism workers, you know, mm-hmm. feed their families. So there's no one, nobody else. Kasi ang kwarta na na dye. Na ada ng kwartas mga tao dya. Wala gastusa. So ang ato yeah. is we push them to spend. Mm-hmm. But spend it here in the Philippines. That's right. Oh, that's good to hear. Exactly. Now, you know for a fact, itong Dolomite Beach. No, I, I just like to. I, I'm not sure whether it's uh, it's with your office or with the, the DNR. But uh, mm-hmm. I just like to get your uh, two cents worth on this. No, as ASEC. No, for DOT. DOT no, yung Dolomite Beach. Uh, tumaas ang tao na pumupunta doon. In fact, last night, I heard about 110,000 yata na mga tao. And uh, there has been a cause for concern for some sectors that it's a super spreader sa COVID-19 virus. Now, how how is DOT or uh, addressing these concerns um, and if you're working or coordinating with the Department of Environment Natural Resources um, considering if it's really under DOT who's in charge of that? Well, it's like this, Doc. No? There's the yeah. Manila Bay Task Force, okay. which was uh, tasked by the president to um, to implement mm-hmm. the Supreme Court decision. Okay. The mandamus, if you recall, there was a mandamus issued by the Supreme Court to the Philippine government agencies mm-hmm. to clean Manila Bay. Mm-hmm. So based on that mandamus, the president mm-hmm. created the Manila Bay Task Force, which mm-hmm. was headed by DNR, and which two other members, DILG and Department of Tourism. So yes. the lead agency here, which I salute clearly, uh, Secretary Simato's leadership in ensuring from a sea of basura to yeah. a sea of white sand humanity talaga. That's like, right. Oh. Personally, personally, Doc Dino, I was there um, last week because I wanted to see it for myself. Yeah. At nakita ko na, you know, the... Sabi ni DNR, they were expecting lang 8,000 people. That's right. Because oh. it's a 1.4 hectares, eh, something like that. So mm-hmm. they were expecting uh, 8,000 people in a day lang. They didn't realize by the weekend, 25,000 in the morning, another 25,000 in the afternoon. And they were not so, they were not prepared. And they were not, hindi nila alam, na sobrang bentang benta ang Manila Bay. So I yeah. had to go. I had to check it myself when yes. I went there, you know, I'm aston- astonished with all the white sand. At yes. Tubig, uh, you can see it in my Facebook page, sir, no? Uh-huh. I took a photo of the water. Uh-huh. It's crystal because I was there on a the sunset. It was uh-huh. like crystal. Like, there was like crystal-like effect. You know, wow. like a clear. And yes. there was no smell. There was no, no smell. Mm-hmm. Now, now, if your question is, um, it will be a super spreader, well, NCR right now is 86% vaccinated. Okay. Uh, it's eligible population. Okay. Uh, so I assume na katunangad to dito daghan tong mga mostly katutong confident eh. Kaya once vaccinated ka mas confident pa ka mo gawas. That's right. I assume. Mm-hmm. Now, katunang na yung mga bata dito supposedly dili, pwede yun ang mga bata magawas gawas under alert level 3. But yes. of course, we acknowledge na you know, ang masa daghan kaya you know, mas, siguro other Filipinos can have so much space in their house but for other Filipinos who have very tiny houses this particular God's gift of revitalized Manila Bay is something they couldn't wait and just go and see it for themselves yes. and, you know, for their sanity. So we try to understand that, but we acknowledge that there were violations there. That's why I think DNR, um, for Friday, pinasara nila yes. to make sure na walang, you know, 
walang makapasok muna until sa time they were able to craft already. Because when I was there, parang fiesta. That's right. The whole, oh. the whole Manila Bay leading to the entrance of the Dolomite Beach. Yeah, yeah. At parang sinulog festival. Yeah. The Blasan Festival, Sandudot Festival, gaana. Yeah. So like people were just walking, ba? People were just walking, etc. Something like that. So it's something that the DNR fully acknowledges it and they're doing something about it. And we thank the president's leadership no? for ensuring this is the second time already that he cleaned something like this. The first one is Boracay. Mm-hmm. He cleaned the Boracay and That's right. all the dirt in Boracay is gone right now. So it's perfect. Tagadumagate, please travel to Boracay. You can travel mm-hmm. now to Boracay. Uh-huh. And second is Manila Bay. It's beautiful. If you visit yes. Manila, Doc, I'll be your tour guide. Thank you. Day. I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll contact you. Ma, grabe, Isaac pa yung magal tour guide. Ha? <laughs> Now, Isaac, uh, yung, I'll just get want to get your thoughts on the shift of the national IATF on the general community quarantine guidelines to new alert level system guidelines. Your thoughts on that? Well, you know, it, before we have the ECQ, MECQ, GCQ, MGCQ. Correct. And In uh, NCR, we started, we piloted the uh, alert level system sometime in September. Mm-hmm. And at the time, there was really surge in uh, Delta variants in NCR. So super scary. Talaga. In fact, I was hit by that uh, Delta variant also. But good thing, God's grace, no? I was like asymptomatic. And the good thing about alert level system is the lockdown will not be the whole region. It is granular lockdown. Like for instance, if there's a spike in in Pasay uh, area, so mm-hmm. the lockdown will just be limited there. We don't okay. have to necessarily close the restaurants in Alabang or mm-hmm. in Makati because there's no spike after all. And it proves to be very efficient when uh, we were able to bring down a lot of cases in NCR, especially with the alert level system, because you're able to focus your effort to a certain area with their spike. And leave this area where there's no spike, economic activity to flourish, and there's income. Because we really have to balance economy and health, public health. So alert level system is very good. I hope uh, there's already in the provinces, San Negros and where alert level four, mm-hmm. but it's being cascaded across the country. I hope by um, November all will be in alert level system. It is a very efficient in handling COVID response and you know the cases of surge etc. It's much easier and you are able to balance clearly the economy and public health. Well said. Uh, Isaac, I don't want to put you on the spot but uh, you know, uh, I know for a fact that uh, you plan day by day. Hindi naman tayo pwedeng masyadong magpa-plan sa buhay natin very <laughs> far flung. No? But uh, after your government career, uh, especially with being with the executive, any any political plans in the off thing later especially here in Dubaguete no <laughs> <laughs> well sir ganito doc no i'm yes. only 37 years old okay so i'm only in government service in the, as a bureaucrat for nearly 10 years mm. so i'd like to you know gain more mm. and ripen more mm. and if so in god's perfect time mm. if i'm called to serve Mm-hmm. If the people of Dumagate would want me to serve them, then I will surely be there because I'm always there. Mm-hmm. Isag na akos Dumagate, I always talk about Dum- because isag na akos Manila, I always talk about Dumagate. I'm mm-hmm. always proud about Dumagate and Negros Oriental. Very good. And and you know, in God's perfect time. <laughs> Very good. Well said. Ha? Talaga ayaw mo ba controversial tayo dito? <laughs> Isaac, um, if uh, uh, you're proud of uh, Dumaguete, Negros Oriental, people here, we're doubly proud about what you have accomplished. Thank uh, you. Right, right. Uh, rising, uh, going from the ranks up now to where you are. Uh, we'd like to get your parting thoughts and message to the gentle people of Dumaguete and the Negrenses. Please. Una sa tanan, daghan kayong salamat, Doc Dino, for... Your time, no? You're very busy handling mayor's office, city health, a uh, city human resource development office. Of course, you have your TV program, which is very part and important in governance. Yes. And I thank you. I salute you because yes. through you. this particular platform, you're able to deliver critical and substantial, significant informations to the public 
not right. just in the city of Dumagate, but the rest of the province of Negros Oriental. Very critical, yan. and I thank you for serving the city together with, of course, Mayor Pet. My best regards to Tito, no? And the yeah. gang salamat sa katawhan sa dakpayan sa Dumagate for always, um, you know, for always remembering us. Remembering my father. Yes. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> so, uh, we are here to serve. I mean, ako, dako kay influensya, ako umahan sa ako, uh, in terms of service. No? So, when this pandemic hit, and I was with the Department of Tourism, and that's why we are doing all this too long. Department of too long, beyond our mandate already. It was so easy for me because I was so exposed in community work when even when I was so little. So this is something that I love to do. I love to serve. And, you know, it's good that we keep on praying. We pray for the best of our community and we pray for the best of health for each and every individual. No one is safe until everyone is safe. So guys, get vaccinated. Vaccines work. And you have to listen to the mayor. You have to listen to our officials. You have to listen to the president. And the president is saying that vaccines is very important in order for us to really recover and reboot this economy. And the whole Philippines will have a better, a brighter, and a bolder normal. So, normal. So, thank you so much, Dr. Yu. Isaac uh, Makiling, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for spending time with us uh, to be interviewed here in our episode of Let's Talk. Salamat you, Kayo. I had a really wonderful conversation with you. And uh, I'm sure this will not Thank be the last that. time. And then please make this as a venue for you if you have special announcements that you'd like to do or if you would like to just contact me and uh, I'll be very happy to conduct the interview and really spread the good news to the people of Negros Oriental and to Maguete City. Thank you very much, ASEC Makiling. Uh, I saw your father recently. Talagang gumagawa po rin si Sir Makiling, ha? Oh. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. Abu Abata. Abu Abata. Thank you. Okay. Lastly, please yes. travel, but please travel. You know, travel safe, and you know, have a safe trip in us. Magadang hapon, magadang gabi sa lahat. Thank you, Doc Dini. So that's our, our guest for tonight, uh, Isaac uh, uh, Woodrow RR, better known as RR, no? uh, Makiling Jr. And uh, please do continue to like, share, and follow our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram pages. And please do continue to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you very much. And that's our show for tonight. Be well. We are back in business, but not business as usual. Time and time again, Philippine tourism has consistently proven its resilience and its ability not just to bounce back as a sector, but to lead the country's economic and social recovery. Amidst this uncharted territory, now we call the new normal, tourism offers a unique opportunity for a more sustainable and responsible conduct of business. One of the fastest ways to rebuild consumer confidence is through tourism because of its multi-sectoral breadth and deep social footprint. Come to think of it, as we have been told to stay at home out of fear due to an invisible threat, being locked down for weeks and even months will need a psychological letdown and letdown. This is where tourism will play its role in helping people recover and rediscover oneself and the community. Without further ado, it is my distinct honor to welcome you all to the second edition of the Leadership Excellence Series, featuring another powerhouse lineup of speakers inspired by TED Talk format that aims to highlight the 21st century business and leadership acumen. Echoing the theme, rebuild and redefine, these online learning envisions to take the lead in harnessing global leadership ideas and digital technology to grow local businesses. So sit back with your pen and notes and be energized and inspired by our invited thought leaders and influencers. Ria, take it away.